Someone pushes me up a grass slope. There is a ditch. It is not wide, but difficult to cross. The difficult to cross ditch at the top of the slope is full of bones of prehistoric animals. The remains of violent things, of beasts of prey, of monsters, of snakes. They go far down into the abyss. There, There is a plank to cross by, but the air seems full of restraining power. Like the invisible influence of some powerful magnet. And this, with the fear of crossing this depth, although the width is not great, holds me back. I cannot say for how long, for there is no ordinary time in all this. Then I find myself across on the other side. What wonderful vision do I now behold? I see someone teaching or drilling some recruits. That is all. At first sight, there seems nothing marvelous. He smiles. He indicates somehow that he does not necessarily expect to get any results from what he is doing. He does not seem to mind. He does not show any signs of impatience when they are rude to him. The lesson is nearly over, but this will not make any difference to him. It is as if he said, well, this has to be done. One cannot expect much. One must give them help, though they don't want it. It is his invulnerableness that strikes me. He is not hurt or angered by their sneers or lack of discipline. He has some curious power, but hardly uses it. I pass on marveling that he could do it. I could not take on such a thankless task. Eventually I come to a place, perhaps a shop, where boats are stored. Beyond is the sea. When I awake, I think of this man. To do what he's doing is so utterly contrary to anything I would do. I would need a new will to do it. It would mean I would have to go in a direction that I never went in. I thought much about this direction. How could I define it to myself? I would have been violent to those recruits. Yes, that was it. He showed no violence. He had not a will of violence. He seemed purified from all violence. That was the secret. That was the source of the curious power I detected in him. A man without violence. And then I reflected then, to reach him, I had had to get across the other side of the deep gulf, full of the bones of prehistoric beasts, full of the remains of violent creatures. This had been done for me somehow, and I found myself in the border of another country, at the edge of it only, but beyond the prehistoric beasts. Here this nonviolent man lived and taught. It was the country of the nonviolent, where recruits were being taught. They seemed an indifferent lot, but perhaps they represented people who could learn something eventually. He had nearly finished his lesson. Beyond was the sea and there were boats stored near it. No doubt when he had finished the course, he was going on somewhere beyond the land. As for me, I had been given only a glance into the meaning of a new will. A will not based on violence or on having your own way. I repeat, only a glance. 
For I knew I had not, save in spirit, really crossed the deep gulf yet, filled with the bones of the violent past, and left it behind finally. There were no recruits for me, or were those recruits different eyes and myself that he was trying to teach? Certainly, none of the waiting boats was mine. But from this glance, I know more practically what going in a new direction is, and what a new will, purified from violence, means. I know also that the possibilities of following this new will and new direction lie in every moment of one's life, and that I continually forget. <laughs>